I have. It's just about five o'clock, so I'm going to call the uh, call the meeting to order, the Middlesex Select Board meeting to order. And we have, I am Peter Hood. Randy, why don't you introduce the people at the town hall? Sure. If we can just have you guys go around, uh, just state your names. Samantha Bodwin. Samantha Bodwin. Yep. Stephen Dennis. Dennis. Shelly Deschardin. Shelly Deschardin. Blanchel LaForce. LaForce. Okay. So, um, guys, I will do and myself my and Liz as well, Peter. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Just, just, just for the people in the town hall, I will do my best to recognize you if you wave your hands or call for attention. But, but Randy's going to keep an eye on you, and if I'm not paying attention, he'll stop me in my tracks. Okay. So, we want to recognize you and hear from you. We have uh, Dorinda Crowell, the town treasurer, Liz Sharp from the select board, Phil Hayek from the select board, Vic Dwyer is the road commissioner. Evelyn and Zach French, uh, Sandy Levine from the Planning Commission, and of course, our uh, our mobile conscience, uh, Sarah Merriman. Welcome, everyone. I, I didn't get Dennis's name. It's actually Steve Dennis. Yeah. Steve, Steve Dennis. Dennis. Steve Dennis, sorry. Thank you. We also have Eric Mativia and Steve Jeffries here. Okay. So Eric, you're just gonna have to speak up if you wanna be recognized because I can't see you, of course. So yep. don't be shy, thank you. Yep. Okay, the first item on our agenda is discussion about possible unapproved upgrades to the class four section of Mead Peter, Road. Peter, yes. gotta stop. you have to ask for about, um, any amendments to the agenda because there are two. Okay, <laughs> amendments to the agenda. Vic, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to, uh, or Eric and I'd like to have uh, an executive session for a uh, person now. Okay. Can we do that at the end? Does that work? Victor? Eric, is, Eric wants to speak on that. I, it, it, it's not a big deal to me either way. I mean, I guess we, we can do it earlier or we can do it later. It shouldn't take too long. No, whenever well, we whenever it works. Part of the, we can do it as part of the highway report if it's quick. It's just we've got quite a few people here and getting okay. them in and out is going to be a little bit of a challenge, but let's see how it goes. Okay. Okay. Um, and what's the other amendment, Sarah? Uh, I, I think that Vic's going to address it just a bid from Hutchins, so a revised bid from Hutchins. Okay, so that, that'll be part of the uh, part of the highway report. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so with that. Um, discussion about possible unapproved upgrades to the class four section of Mead Road action possible. Is that you, Victor? Um, yes, I get, I believe so. Um, okay, you're on. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Eric and I went over there. Uh, I can't exactly tell you what day it was. One, one day after uh, I got a call from uh, Shelley. Those are down. And we went over. And we talked to Sam, Wayne, um, Shelly on the phone. I'm I'm at the office. At the, what's that? I'm I'm here in the office. Well, whatever day you call me, I don't know what. what I'm just talking to over the phone. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> He's looking for me. And. Um, I talked on the phone with uh, Zach later, in, Zach French later in the day. And Eric and I went over and talked to other people. Um, we did not witness or did not see any, um, what you would call uh, upgrades to the highway, but uh, um, obviously, uh, a couple were, we're upset about uh, a uh, water bar, uh, speed bump, what, whatever you want to call it, and um, we didn't we didn't witness anything like that that day. Uh, I don't know if it was removed or whatever. Uh, Sam expressed uh, that 
Zach was going on his property, on her property, I'm sorry, on her property. And uh, um, I assume that she probably meant outside of the right of way, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, they did talk about a mud hole that's across the road from uh, Zach's. Uh, here again, uh, I don't believe we saw anything that was that big an issue. And I advised and tried to talk to all people involved that what they what was going on there is what we've seen over the years is uh, you know a difference of opinion amongst neighbors and I think you kind of got to work it out between the neighbors. But uh, anyways, do we got anything to add to that, Eric? No, I think that covers everything. So um, we, re we received a letter from who, uh, Sarah? It, an email from, it was an email from Sam. Sam, yeah. Yeah. OK, he's not here tonight, right? It's a she. She's she. A, she's oh, I'm right sorry. Tonight. She is here tonight. Okay, well, I would I would like to hear from uh, he, her and then hear from uh, Zach and Evelyn. And and Shelly has asked uh, to speak as well, Peter. Okay, that's fine. I, if, if I could just say, I think what ha needs to happen is clarification of what can and cannot be done on a class four road. And I, that way, if all parties understand, it'll make it a lot easier to move forward. Did you hear that? Okay, well, I, believe, I believe Sarah sent you or sent some of you a copy of our class four road policy she did yes. and basically basically what it says is any upgrade or change to a class four road needs to be approved first of all by the road commissioner which would be victor and then uh approved by the select board so just to be crystal clear, nobody is, has the authority on their own to go out and make any changes to class four roads. Now, you know, let's be realistic. I'm not really concerned about somebody putting a little gravel in a mud hole, but I'm certainly concerned about creating speed bumps or chasing the course, course of the road or changing the way the, the water runs in or out of the road or any serious change to the road. So if there have been uh, those kind of changes going on to the road, um, we're concerned about that, and we need to be involved in that process. But apparently, from from uh, Victor's and Eric's inspection, uh, they didn't see any indication of that. Uh, you may you may disagree. Um, the the other thing I want to be clear on in terms of interaction between neighbors, whether it's dumping brush or gravel or dirt or mud or whatever on your on your neighbor's land the town does not get involved in any of that that's a that's a neighborhood dispute and you guys have to deal with that uh on your own we can't help you but the class war road we can help you um so uh with that zach do you have anything to uh Wait, add sam to this? Didn't get to talk. i'm sorry sam did not get to talk you okay. Said, ask Sam, okay, Sam go and ahead. Then Zach. So yeah, my concern is not with my personal property. It's with the class four road itself. So two weeks ago, a speed bump was put into the road. Nobody knew about it. Um, and my mother and grandmother hit it with their SUV and bottomed out. It was that large. Um, when I spoke to Zach about it, he said it was a water bar. Um, and it, so I I'd, I'd reached out with a, to a couple people, so Vic and Sarah being two of the people, to get clarification on what you can and can't do on a class four road. And it sounds like it's in violation, so you can't just put a speed bump in the road or a water bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I don't feel it's needed. This is my eighth year here, and it's never been an issue. Um, another thing is putting... So planting grass on a class four road um, and parking vehicles and equipment on a class four road. So that was the main clarification that I wanted to get. And looking at the policy that Sarah had sent, it does not look like you can just put in a speed bump without, or a water bar without following a process and you can't park vehicles equipment on a class four road. The only thing, and, and uh help me out here, Victor, but I don't think there's anything wrong with parking 
vehicles on a class four road next to your property, you certainly cannot block the road. But there's nothing I know of that says any of us on any of our roads in Middlesex can't park vehicles in the town right away on a town road, whether it's class four, class three, or whatever it is now. Certainly if the road's blocked or something like that, that's a different kettle of fish. Uh, Zach, your response? Yes. Uh, so the water kept coming down by my shed, so I just diverted a little bit with a hoe. Um, it was very slight. I haven't changed it, and it was there when Vic drove through. It's I haven't done anything different. I've been back dragging the road every spring for 30 years, and if we didn't do that after mud season, the road would be huge potholes and bumps and all, all out of even. And I've never had a problem, and she's never had a problem with me doing that for the last eight years she's been here until recently uh, this just happened. So I actually have a picture. I don't know if you wanna see it. I have a picture of the bump that he put in. So that that was removed days later. So, and I, and I wouldn't have an issue if things were being done to the class four road that actually bettered the class four road, but that's dangerous. Putting something in the road like that well, and that knowing that's dangerous. Hold on a second, Zach, go ahead. So I, I am looking at a photo here. Uh, I showed Liz, um, and there's there's definitely a bump in the road there. Um, well, I knocked it down with my vehicle the, and I hit it. That's the, after it's been driven. The magnitude of of the bump is hard to tell from the photo, but it does look. I mean, it would be significant if you especially, well, especially if, you didn't, if you didn't know about it. So. Okay. So here's here's the bottom line uh, for for all of you, Zach. I appreciate you're you're trying to make the road better. I appreciate that you've uh, uh, spent your own time and effort to to try and improve the road in the springtime. All I would ask from you is that you consult with Victor and get his permission before you do that. And you know it isn't a blanket ongoing permission. When you're going to do it in the spring, you should give him a call and say. You know, we've got a situation on our road. I'd like to go out there with my tractor or backhoe or whatever it is and and make it better. And and Victor can say, well, that's great. You know, don't make the water bars any higher than who knows who knows what. As long as as long as you do that and the town agrees, there's no issue. But you shouldn't and can't. And it is a violation of our policy for you to go ahead and just do that on your own, no matter how well intended. Does that make sense? And in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, your neighbors who are who are concerned about this, uh, this the same obviously applies to you if you desire to uh, change the road in any uh, in any way. But what I would encourage you all to do is work together in a collaborative way uh, to make it work and agree on what the what the work should be. Uh, and I know sometimes when all of a sudden you come across a change in the road and you don't know what's there and your car bottoms out, you get upset, I understand. Um, we have a lot of dirt roads in our town and a lot of class four roads and they're always a challenge, no matter what a challenge. So all we're trying to do is walk the middle line, have our walk the middle line, have our uh, road commissioner oversee the process and make sure it's as fair to everyone as it can be. Anybody have anything to, uh, to add to that? I have papers? one thing to say. Okay. I have a uh, Mercedes station wagon and it's very low to the ground and I would never make it. So I bought them out in that and they have an SUV. So I don't understand how that would bottom out. Like I wouldn't have made it that high for my car. It was very. So you make me. I, I appreciate, I appreciate that Zach. I just, you know, I don't know how high it was. I don't know what what caused the vehicle to bottom out, but but the whole idea is for uh, neighbors to work together and then be sure and inform the town and get agreement for the town before you go out and change the road. And that includes, you know, that includes digging out ditches, cleaning out culverts. I mean, what whatever uh, whatever needs to be done. And in some cases, 
uh, when it comes to culverts, for instance, and I don't know if there are any culverts on the portion of the road we're discussing, um, that can be a town issue. So if there's a problem with a, a plug culvert that's causing uh, a problem in the road, have uh, let Victor know and we'll try and take care of it. So that's the other, the other part of this as well. Thank you. Anything else, anyone? Uh, Shelly, like to be uh, like to speak? Just, just okay. For, again, it's for clarification. I mean, I live in a class three road, um, and I know this used to be a class four road, but the bridge had collapsed years ago. And I think um, where the equipment and stuff is being parked is where you'd go across the bridge if it was still there. And my concern is um, we've snow plowed, so Sam and I could get out for the last eight years, and Sam's been there. And there's no place with all the equipment being parked there to turn around unless. Uh, again, it's class four road. People try to go by all the time, and then have to back out either onto Zach's property or Sam's property and private property, because where the equipment stuff is is not along the side of the house. It's right where it's the bridge used to be. Blocking the class. And so my concern is with people trying to turn around. Again, they're going to be on one of the other's property, upsetting one of the neighbors. So if that, if that makes sense. So Peter, I I did drive out there and take a look at the situation. Um, yep. And and my understanding of where the class four road does come up and it would have crossed a previous previously existing bridge. Um, there there is a, a backhoe par currently parked in that exact location, and I maybe it was a car or something. I I was focused on the backhoe when I did go out there, um, yes. but but there is there is equipment currently blocking what would have been. The access to that bridge in the class four. So is that is that where the bridge was? Is that yeah. still part of our existing class four road, or does the class four road end where the bridge was, Victor? Yeah, it's uh, it's right where the bridge uh, you know collapsed into the brook. Uh, yes, his yeah he had uh, I assume it was Zach. He had his uh, tractor backhoe, and I think it was like a Ford eight N or something parked there. But I thought. <clears throat> It wasn't a bad idea. There's a gate right to the side of it, and the gate's closed. And the gate—I guess the gate belongs to Sam. And and uh, the only thing we were thinking was, uh, you know, that would stop somebody from going over the bridge. But uh, if it's an issue, and it's in Sam's way, I guess we'd have to buy a sign and say bridge closed. But but. To get to my question, mm -hmm. does the wow. class four road continue beyond the bridge or no? Yeah, yeah, it goes all the way down to the field in the interstate. Okay, but you can't drive through there anymore, right? Uh, right, no, no, unless uh, Sam uh, 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 or Sam gives you permission, uh, I would think, because it kind of goes, uh, it might still be in the right of way a little bit, but she's got a, uh, I, understood it was it belonged to Sam she has a gate there uh, in the bar and uh, that was just to keep people from driving down there and getting in trouble and uh, having to get towed out or whatever I guess is, is that oh. Sam yeah that's okay. my property and yeah. people shouldn't be driving through a stream anyway right right yeah I didn't have any didn't have any problem with the gate or anything but should we, meaning that meaning the town, yeah. say that the road is say the road is blocked there and block it off? Oh, you just put up a sign and say bridge closed or bridge out or something. Yeah, bridge. Yeah, usually put you know like on the interstate when we were doing or on any of the route tools or anything we did uh, we do road work like down in Montpelier the the the, uh, the real roadway they just put up a sign bridge closed and and uh, if they want. Yeah. To her, but we, we would just put bridge closed. And See you, Zach. I'll, I'll get you in a minute. Okay, Zach, go ahead. If my uh, come up with something to barricade it, absolutely. Recording Perfect. in progress. Uh, Shelly's asked for a follow up, Peter. Yeah, yep. go ahead, Shelly. Uh, sorry, detailitis. Um, I know that there was a lot of high grass there, and Zach just cut it all down so you can see where the because the bridge is still laying in the stream um but on zach's behalf if he needed access 
to go down that class four road, would the town be getting involved to put a bridge there so that it can, or would that be a state issue? Because I know you can't just put a bridge in because there's a lot of laws behind that also. I know me and Victor talked about that. Right. Yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of laws and I, I can't imagine uh, at any time in the foreseeable future, we're gonna rebuild that bridge. Okay. But what we do have to do is make it, uh, is make it safe. And again, um, whatever Zach does in the town right away, he should be getting permission from Victor, whether it's mowing or planting grass or creating water bars or whatever it is. And, and by permission, I mean, I don't, I don't mean a big formal process. I mean, give Victor a call, describe to him uh, what you wanna do. And if he thinks he needs to meet with you, he will. If not, he'll just say, yep, go ahead. Um, we're not trying to create a, a problem for anybody. Uh, and we appreciate that, you know, your, your efforts have potentially made the road better and safer for the most part, even though there's a little problem right now. In, in conjunction with that, Peter, uh, I think uh, if, if it was, you know, if he notifies me, I think I would uh, get the contact information for Sam and, and let her know what was going to happen. Yep. Yep. Just to keep her in. And, and if Shelly wants to know, we can do that too. Yep. Cooperate with all members. We're not. We're not siding with anybody. We just, just like. But I, I mean, I re I realize you guys are a little uh, <laughs> after each other at the moment. But the best thing would be is if you could all get along together and agree on what's going to happen there, and then somebody can come to Victor. If you can't agree, then then Victor will be the and the select board will be the uh, arbiters of the situation. Anything else, anybody? Okay, thank you all very much for coming. Well, thank, thank you. you. And we will uh, we will make an effort to get that uh, road blocked off as soon as reasonably possible. Um, so with that, um, uh, Victor and Eric uh, wanna have a short executive session. So we need a motion to go into executive session. Appreciate it. I'm gonna give you guys the citation. So we should wait till these guys leave, Peter. Okay, yeah. I think you can, uh, you know. okay. Yeah, thanks for coming. So if this is uh, an appointment or employment, Appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or, or employee. Does that sound right, guys? Does that sound like what you're, what you're talking about here? Okay, but you make a final decision to hire, appoint, an open meeting, and it must explain the reasons for its final decision. That's one BSA three one three A three. When you just when you go into ex, when you ask for executive session, just cite to that to say, you know, whatever as permitted under the open meeting law. So somebody willing to you're willing to make that motion, Phil. I am citing okay. the okay. statute that, that Sarah just mentioned. Okay. okay. Just a second, please. I'll second it. Okay. Thank you, Vic. And then you have uh, to decide. Okay. Whoop. You have to decide who to include in there that who is not on the select board. Do you want to be seen? We have Dorinda. Tilt it like that. That way it's still here. And how about Eric? Eric. Oh uh, yeah. Eric, uh, don't forget Eric. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Sarah, My bad. Are you involved or not? I don't need to be involved. Dorinda, I can make Dorinda drive. Okay, make Dorinda the operator. And okay. can you just put me in the waiting room until you come back? I'm going to put you in the waiting room right now, Sandy. Okay. Don't forget Orca. I won't forget Orca. Orca, I'm going to pause it. Pause that. Recording stopped. So, uh, we need a motion on this uh, hiring decision. So how do we decide we're going to do this? We're going to, we're, we're going to um, uh, grant authority to Eric and Vic to make an offer to what, what's his name again? I wouldn't use his name right now. Oh, right, because, yeah. Well, it's just, he has an existing job, you know. I would I would just say, make an offer to the candidate as discussed in executive session or something like that. Okay. 
make an offer <laughs> at twenty four dollars an hour to the to the, the the candidate that you're recommending. Yeah, there you go. Did you say twenty four dollars an hour? Yes. Okay. Yes. And and I would I would like to amend that to just include. Uh, satisfactory review of referral uh, references yeah. on top of that as well. Sure. And also we have the, he's not working for a town now, right? He's been working for Newton. Oh God. So, so he'll have to have a, <laughs> he'll have to have a not, That's the wrong company anyway. That's okay. All right. He will need to have a drug test, correct? Correct. Well, all highway crews, no matter where okay. they're working, has to. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, all right. Is, is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. Okay. Yeah, uh, Victor seconded it. Randy seconded it. Um, Randy, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Go to work, boys. Thank you. Any anything else from the uh, highway department? We did get that updated uh, bid from uh, Jay Hutchins. I think at some point you're going to have to sign that. Or we are somebody of the chairman. The bottom of that is accepted. I'll be back in town tomorrow, so I can I can sign it. Okay. Could you uh, could you give me a little? Could you give the minutes some interesting? So what about the uh, the bid from Hutchins? Is it up? Is it down? Is it? I mean, I've got it here, but the bid the total bid now is three hundred forty one sixty five. But right. And I think, correct me, Dorinda, I think you said that was around 56,000 less than the last um, one. Yes, 56, approximately 56,000 okay. less. Yeah. Great, thank you. And Victor, this, this includes not raising the height of the road, correct? That's correct. Is that, that's where the savings come from, was the removal of the asphalt that the town road crew did? I wouldn't say that. What what are where do the savings come from? The uh, method of uh, coal planing and putting back pavement, as opposed to reclaiming. Okay. Mm. You know, I got I got to say that um, you know the the work that you guys did down there um, by the farm is great. I I love the dirt road personally. I was. I was thinking, tear up the little piece of tar here as you turn up the Brook Road and leave it. <laughs> Pave it to where it stops. If somebody wants to make a motion on that and uh, it accept the leg board, we'll do it. Well, that was just my opinion. So. That'll save you. That'll save you even more money. Well, uh, I think I think we've I think we've crossed that bridge. If we're going to consider doing this, we've got to go back to the neighbors and talk to them and. I, I believe we've made the decision to, to go ahead with this plan, and I'm very happy that we uh, we we changed the way we're doing it. So we've saved fifty six thousand dollars, and we're not going to raise the height of the road. I think we're in a good place. I think we should go ahead. So we don't need uh, we don't need a motion to accept this bid, or do we? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Anything else? Anything else on? Uh, the roads have we got our other truck back yes we Wonderful. we actually we actually picked it up the day after our last select board meeting so good we've had it back for almost two weeks now or about two weeks so yeah yep 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 and any any uh, more news on the new truck uh it will be ready mid-september uh went down last week and uh, went over the build um and the placement of the levers and everything else. So we're good to go. So can uh, can you clarify when you said pick up the old truck, are we are we back to a full force or are we still down yes. one missing nope. the fan clutch? No, nope, we are back to both tandems. Okay, perfect. What a yep. struggle, huh? What a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Great. Um, Moving right along, and we're a little behind schedule. Mo monthly joint meeting with the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department and setting a date for the public hearing, transforming the the MVFD from a separate 501c3 to a town department action likely. Uh, Eric, just keep on going. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Yeah. So uh, sent out the uh, 
Jeff did the uh, breakdown of what happened last month. Uh, just go over it with you real quick. Uh, total calls were to date are 40. Uh, we had four last month. Uh, two of them were mutual aid out. Um, max responders is five, minimums two, so average of 4.25. Uh, engine went out three times and rescue out once. Let's see. Calls were 19th of July. We had a mutual aid call out to Montpelier for a vehicle accident. They were canceled when uh, Capital West realized actually it was in Montpelier. Um, July 22nd, mutual aid out to River Road for Moortown for a uh, vehicle accident there. Uh, 89 vehicle accident and the 14th is a uh, vehicle versus bear. That was actually this past weekend. Um, training, we did uh, sign set up on road scenes and um, he has down here status on air pack purchase question mark. And then um, fast squad, we have 15 total for the reporting period, 11 medical and four were in conjunction with the fire department. So that's pretty much the synopsis. Okay, thank you. Um, so we're gonna be talking about, uh, we're gonna be talking about air packs tonight when we talk about the ARPA money, but okay. um, we know that that's, that that's an issue and we've got the updated, uh, we've got the updated uh, okay. bid. So okay. we're, we haven't done it yet, but we're getting close. Yep, awesome. Um, in terms of in terms of a uh, public meeting to talk about this change in in organization of the fire department, uh, we had some discussion about this at the last meeting, and we didn't make a decision. Um, what are we thinking, board members? I can just say something. The, okay. uh, the sixth is going to be is pretty big. We've already got stuff going on. The 20th, you're going to have the public hearing on the zoning regulations. So that pretty much takes your meeting for the to October. Yeah. So, and what do we have for the first meeting in October? Well, so Who far, it's pretty point. clear. Right. <laughs> Well, I don't see any reason that that won't work. I was hoping we would be able to do it in September, but I do think it's a bad idea to try and have two public hearings on one night. People are gonna get confused. We're gonna get confused. Um, yeah. So let's let's set it for the let's set it for the first meeting in October. Um, Eric, what I would what I would like to do is uh, at some point between now and then, and, and maybe sooner rather than later, uh, get together with you, because I think what we should do is you and I should potentially, not that others others can't get involved, but we should put together a little presentation for that public hearing, the reasons why we're, uh, yeah. why we're doing this. We can put that together and then the select board can look it over and see if they wanna add anything to it. And you can also uh, consult with members of the fire department. I wanna, yeah. be, uh, I wanna be standing up there with you uh, arm in arm with smiles <laughs> on our faces, as they say, when we, uh, yep. when we do this. Um, does that sound okay to everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've, you've got that, Sarah? Yep. Uh, and then I think the last thing we had on the uh, fire department issue was considering a letter of support for the Capital Regional Communication Systems Project Action Likely. Um, you received that, uh, everyone received a copy of uh, the suggested letter of support, which I read it over, it sounded fine to me. Um, and it's just, just to be clear, this is, this is support for them getting grant money. This isn't support for them bonding or going into debt or anything, mm -hmm. anything like that. So um, the only consequence of this for the town of Middlesex would be if it goes all goes through that, uh, we would have a better, more efficient communication system. So I don't yep. see why we uh, why we wouldn't support it unless uh, unless someone disagrees. And if we do agree, would someone make that motion, please? I'll make the motion. Um, I move that we uh, send a letter of support for the Capital Region Communication System uh, Project. And is there a second? 
A second. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor of the uh, of signing the letter of support for the Capital Regional Communication System, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and I will, uh, it'll probably be Thursday when I come in, uh, Sarah. Yeah, you just need to, uh, you know, authorize Peter to sign it or else maybe you don't, but just just put it in the motion. Because there's only, okay one, adding, adding only one room. Motion. Bill? Yeah, okay. yeah I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. And Liz, you're okay with adding that to the motion? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, thank you, Eric. You have, do you have right. anything from the uh, fire department? No. Nope. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I would uh, only ask, Whoop. sorry, I was just gonna say if Sarah wouldn't mind correcting the grammar in the letter, that would be helpful. Dude, it's a PDF. No, I have it as a word. I have it as a word. Oh, okay. Well, that's a pretty easy one to correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, treasurer support, Dorinda. Okay. Um, I sent you guys the year-end budget status. As you can see, we came in just under a 3% overspent in the expenditures. So that came in about where we thought, better than what I initially thought, mm -hmm. but right where um, I thought we were gonna end up afterwards. So. Um, so that's good. We're getting, uh, Cheryl's been working very diligently on getting together all the reports for the audit and that will be going out by the end of the month. So, uh, and here, there we are for another year done. <laughs> there you um, go. Well, that's a relief because boy, three or four months ago was looking like it was going to be yeah. really bad. And I'm, I'm not saying that isn't, that isn't real money, but with the repairs we had and some of the other issues we had, I think we, uh, I think we did, uh, I think we did well. Yeah. I think yeah. well. It was surprising. Yeah. So um, just about a couple of things. Um, I talked to Phil um, about that MS office situation. Did you hear back from Holland on that? Oh, I did. I'm sorry. I didn't get back to you. I thought you were CC'd on the message. Um, no. He, he was suggesting um, it, it's another flavor of the, the MS office. It's called Apps for Business. And um, the reason he was recommending that one is they can remotely support that uh, i guess they'll they would put something on the server that takes care of licensing all the updates are automatic so it's constantly patched and um and with them being able to remotely support that i think makes a lot of sense rather than you know we if we have a problem we don't have to have holland you know get in a car and drive out and and, and do something um so I know. I, I think it's probably the best way to go. I mean, a lot of things are moving in that direction. It's what nine? What did we see during the ninety-nine a year? No, that was that one that you wanted to go with. This is eight ninety-five a person per month, or six ninety-five a person per month. Okay. Although I thought if you buy, if you pay the whole thing up front. It comes out to like 89. There's a discount if you pay it as a one time fee for a yearly license. Mm, I, um, not I according to what he told no? me. No, okay. Um, I think it's a per person per month, but I, I can look back into it. My concern is that, you know, this license is going to expire and I don't know if we're yeah. still going to be able to use it and we can't afford to be without it so right. um so how many how many when you say per person it's per computer right per computer <laughs> so i think we were talking i added it up and then there was either six or seven i figured there was one two three four five it's, it's six i think something like that six 
Is it that many? We don't need it on the public computer. No, I'm not put... counting that. Okay. I'm counting, um, we have the lister, the bookkeeper. We have Sarah's upstairs and Sarah's downstairs. Right. And then we have my laptop uh, and we have the highway departments. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we you're, talking, have... you're talking like $650 for the year? For the whole thing? Could That's, be. Yeah, Could if be. it's eight ninety nine for oh, what did I do? Six, I think, or seven. Yeah, I think it's somewhere, you know, I'd have to look it back up. I I'm, not, not, I'm looking right now. Um yeah, so for for seven for seven it'd be seven hundred and fifty five dollars. So the six, it's roughly six fifty for the year for six of them. Six fifty. Yeah, it's eight ninety nine per month per user. So for for every user, you're looking at one hundred and eight dollars a year, roughly. Okay. It, yeah, it's it, um, it's eight twenty five. I'm on the site right now. Um, okay. I thought there was something where if you you got some discount if you paid it for the year as opposed to on a month to month basis. Guys, I've got to excuse myself for a minute. I've got to grab the power cord from my iPad here, or I'm going to. Yeah. I'll be right back. Oh, and I thought you guys were talking six hundred ninety-five dollars per person per month. <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. What do we okay. What do we pay for things now? Is everything we're doing now? Uh, we I when mean, we bought the original license, it all came with it. Right. The. Um, yeah, all the stuff is uh, strictly installed on your computer. Yeah. Whereas opposed to the cloud-based stuff, you can you can put it on your phone, tablet, whatever. I, I feel for six hundred and fifty dollars, I don't see, you know, uh, why we wouldn't yeah. push forward with something like that, especially if it has the opportunity to alleviate any kind of uh, fees that we're going to incur for travel time or anything like that for yep. upkeep of a normal system. So yep. I would, I don't see why it's, you know, for my end, I, I would support it. Doesn't seem like it's a big issue. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, I think it's the way to go. Just to clarify, when you say they can work remotely, you're not talking about Microsoft, you're talking about- okay. Um, okay. Well, in a way I'm talking both because, well, you know, they do that anyway, as far as upgrades and all that stuff. But it's also nice to have it you know, I have the phone apps. If uh, I mean, I just find I use my phone more and more and more, um, or tablets. So you know, you can put it on a number of different devices per user. Yeah. Okay, so I will tell um, Holland to go forward with it then. Um, and I just wanted to. I am. We keep getting bills from RB Technologies and. It seems to be a repeat of what all of our issues are on an ongoing basis. And we keep getting billed for that time for them to keep saying, oh, you've got issues with your server, you've got this, you've got that. And we don't seem to resolve anything, but we keep getting rebuilt. Um, I think you know, that this is either we've got to do something also with our server, which may be the good lead into our next topic of conversation, the opera funds. But um, I'm, I'm getting concerned that we just keep paying for them to just keep telling us we have a problem. Now, is it above and beyond their, the hours that we contract for? Well, that's the whole thing, Peter. If we didn't use this time up, we would have that time when we had an issue. I yeah, mean, we oh, pay for it. so many hours and, you know, it's it, it's just they're using it up for stuff that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Well, could you, if you wouldn't mind, would you just write me an email and describe that in a little more detail? And I'm going to, I mean, Ruben was supposed to get back to us and come in and meet with us. and 
I'll take my share of the blame, dropping dropping the ball and not following up. But we never had that meeting, and we still need to have it. So, well, uh, you guys sign off on their bill every single month, and I mean that's that's a problem that you guys it's air every single month that we're uh, we're incurring this expense, and nothing seems to be happening. So, I mean, I can send you copies of the bills. And that pretty much summarizes what's going okay. on. That'd be fine. And uh, and let's meet with them and, and bring this up. And I'm sorry we haven't done it already, but we need to. Um, and, you know, if it if it truly can't work, we need to look for another vendor. And I mean, will I'm you distribute sure. that to everyone, Dorinda? Pardon? Can you distribute that to the group? Yeah, I'll get the bills together and send it. But I, I think that, um, and I don't know if you're CC'd on all of that, Phil, or not, but no. I know Sarah gets all the emails that every time we have, you know, it's been going on probably for at least two months that they keep saying we have a server problem. Well, I just heard about it, I think, at our last meeting when, when you brought it up and I, that I chatted mm -hmm. with Sarah when I was in the office. And okay. and Dorinda, just to be clear, they they don't recommend any resolution to this. They just have to come in and reset something, and then it works for a while. And then working we, again, we need a new server. Uh, I think we need a new server. They want us to, you know, it's been five years. We bought the last one in two thousand and seventeen, and they say we need a new server. Have they given us a proposal for the new server? No. No, I'll I'll spec it, Peter. Okay. I'll, I'll I, I don't want them building a server. I'd rather that we buy a, a, a Dell that's, you know, made the right way and has all the support and warranties and, and stuff. I don't, I don't know. I don't, no, I don't, I don't disagree at all, at all with that, Phil. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm discouraged only because, you know, what we said to them is, we wanted to replan to a play, replace our equipment yeah. in an appropriate manner. And I don't think anybody from their office, at least, is paying attention to it. I mean, our computers get get older every day. I mean, five years is is beyond what I think the normal life expectancy of a server is. So, and I'm sure we have some of our other computers are probably aging out too. Well, so, Sarah's needs to be replaced at the same time. The I'm others sorry, are all new enough, I think, that we're fine. Okay. Because didn't, well, didn't it's just get the treasurer? Uh, because we we pay them to manage our manage yeah. our system, and it seems like they're responding to problems, but they're not being proactive about managing the process. But uh, if you would send out those bills, Dorinda, I'll reach out to I'll reach out to Ruben and mm -hmm. we'll okay. go forward. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yep. Uh, anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Um, the next uh, next item on the agenda is talking about the uh, ARPA fund situation. We already heard the question from the fire department about the uh, air packs. I don't know uh, how to go about this. If we can get that, if we can get that document up on the screen, Sarah, can you share your share your screen so we can all see that? Well, I, Dorinda's the host, I, but oh, um, I can give it back. I don't have the document. I don't have the document. I think Liz has it. I never sent it to you. No, Sarah? I don't think so. Okay. Um, yeah, I have yeah, it. Yeah. I have it on my computer right now. Are you able to share? Uh, yep. I just don't want to recreate the wheel and start all over again. Right. No, no, no. I just made you host Sarah too. Okay, I can go, Liz, and see if you uh, if you if I can. No, I have it right here. Okay. So again, I believe our goal tonight was while well, Liz is getting this up to parse this down and then be ready to have a. Uh, public meeting to talk about it. Yet another public meeting. Well, they're all public meeting. Circuit number, Dorinda. What do we have left? Uh, it, we haven't spent, the only thing we've allocated is the 100,000. 100. 
So yeah. what does that leave us? Four fifteen. Four fifteen. Four fifteen. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and change. Okay. Yeah. I think we have, I mean, we have never actually approved it, but I think we have, uh, I guess the right word I would use was committed to the uh, air packs for the fire department, but maybe we haven't. Okay. Okay, thank you. I've, I've got the document up. So right now, uh, So do we have the wish list is at 709. Yeah, because I don't see any top maybe it's just because I can't get it up on my screen. We got 415 left and we've got 709. I guess the the first thing the first thing I would uh, I would take away from this is a is a big chunk of the uh, of the uh, mud se season mitigation potential money. Why? We got to cut something. Okay. I mean, I, okay, I, you yeah. know, we should, I, I guess we should go down through the list. The the CB fiber thing we've done. Yeah. Uh, we've got. Uh, we've talked about the. Uh, town hall planning situation. I think we need to leave that 30,000 in there. If anything, we might need to increase it a little bit, but we should certainly keep that as a placekeeper. Um, grant match, I don't know whether it makes sense to keep that in there or not. Um, you know, remodeling town hall, 50,000 50, is not gonna remodel a town hall. No. So I, I either we either we take that out or we, we put a lot more, uh, we put a lot more into that. Well, you're gonna need that. That was for um, that was a match. That no, that was kind of before it became. I mean, I know it's been urgent. I don't want to say that Sarah's never been urgent about it, but like we were like, well, if we're gonna do band aid repairs, this is how much it's gonna cost. Like right. we need a new heating system, right? Like Sarah said, this heating system is not gonna last. So. Oh, that's for the town garage. Okay. So that was where that that came from. This wasn't really remodeling town hall. It was making emergency band-aid repairs. Right. I mean, what I am what I am very anxious to avoid, and I appreciate the work uh, you're doing, Liz, to get a, a a proposal together to distribute to different people to analyze our town hall. Um, I just don't want to, you know band-aid this and patch that and then end up building a new town hall i mean if we're gonna if we're gonna stay in our existing town hall and we need to have a complete proposal and and figure out when and how we're going to do the work but fifty thousand dollars isn't going to go very far yeah. and the bottom line is if we have to have a heating system before winter we're going to have to buy that heating system one way or the other now can we leave twenty five thousand in there maybe we should just just in case we have to replace the heating system before winter I mean, we got to have a heating system in that building, whether we're going to continue to use it as the town hall or whether we're going to sell it. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is exactly what you want to avoid doing is an emergency heating system replacement for a town, because that means it's going to be an oil burner, which is just against what is recommended at this point for municipal or you know businesses replacing their heating systems and i just is it true that the heating system is broken and can and is not working um, so can i ask a can i ask a question if we yes. so the the problem that we're having is the heat the heater itself which i think creates um, is the forced hot air aspect. That that piece of equipment is done. But we have, I hate to say this, we have baseboard electric, and we also have electric up here in town hall. So even if that thing fails, we can go with very expensive electric for at least one more year. Well, what exactly has, have they taught? I know, I'm, I know there's there's corrosion or, or whatever. I mean, they have not redlined that, that uh, that have they? No. What do you What do you mean by redlined? 
if it if it has failed, they redline it and we're not allowed to use it. They have not done that. There was water. We had the problem that we had was there was water collecting in the heating, whatever that thing is. It's not a boiler. Plenum, yeah. A what? It's a furnace so, boiler. So yeah. it sounds to me like maybe Sarah, they're telling you that uh, the exhaust stack is condensing and it's the water's collecting in the heat exchanger. Uh, that sounds good. But he also said that he that the the machine the piece of equipment we have now they no longer make parts for it. So he put a Band-Aid, to use a happy word, a familiar word tonight, put a Band-Aid on it and said, I don't think it's going to last through next winter, but good luck. That doesn't have like a humidifier on it or something like that that would be creating the moisture. No, no. It's, but I don't know why. There's like puddles in, inside it. It was rusting and corroding. That was the big problem. So that's 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 where, I mean, there is, there is Randy, I believe, and I'm just going for my memory there is a there is a humidifier thing in there but it's been defunct for years okay and the water turned off to it unless somebody turned it on if somebody turned it on that's probably where the water's coming from no there's no trust me it's dry it, no i mean i i would well, even, look, look, look guys we're we're <laughs> this is this is what always happens we we get we get lost in the weeds i'm gonna i'm gonna suggest that we leave twenty five thousand in there with the idea that there, it's likely that we're going to have to uh, replace that replace that furnace, and I believe Liz, to correct you, I believe the furnace is propane, not oil. Yeah, I have no idea what it is. No, it's no. propane. Oh my and God. it yeah. isn't that horrendously expensive to replace, as long as the ductwork and everything else is okay. I mean, I would think it would be. I don't know, certainly less than ten thousand so dollars. We're gonna call it three mile We're gonna call it um emergency. Whoops. And the other thing I would say is what we have upstairs is Renai heaters, which are also uh which are also propane. For okay. And those Renai heaters, as much as as yeah, this is just a heating system and I have been working windows. on windows. See, Randy thinks it's gonna it's closer to fifteen thousand. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, um, okay. So if we were, so the roads mud mitigation, build back better funds to cover most of the cost. Who knows? We haven't seen anything about that. Have we yet, Victor? Any road grants for build back better? No, no, we haven't. Yeah. And the issue I just wanted to bring up, you know, I'm not, don't mean to whine. I think, uh, but <clears throat> we've been out grading the roads and, uh, you know, it's like Bill Reinecke called, of course, that's a class four, but there's several roads in town. We just, we don't have enough gravel on the roads to uh, to uh, build a crown into the road so the water can run off it. I mean, we're really, really lacking gravel and every year we just put a little bit on and most of that goes in in uh, the springtime when, uh, well, mud mitigation. So no, I mean I, you know, I'm not trying to alarm you people, but we really, really keep saying uh, we just got to have more gravel. It takes 2,500 yards per mile to get six inches of gravel, enough to build a crown back in the road. So oh. in 2,500 yards, it's uh, 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 it's around fifteen dollars a yard. So uh, thirty-seven five. 37.5 and you got to truck it. And how, how many miles of road do we have? Dirt road, Victor, do you know? How many roads, how many miles of road? I think it's 47. 47 dirt. Dirt gravel, yeah. yeah. And out of that 47, are you thinking 75% are lacking? 100% are lacking? 100%. Well, no, McCullough Hills, no. three or four inches on it, so. What it, what makes the road so nice on um, uh, Molly Supple Road? That looked really nice. I was biking it yesterday, and it was so like we did, a, we, did a, we did that mud season mitigation right. project two years ago. So what is that day. surface on there? That looks yeah. like it's not a problem. Well, that's gravel, but there's not enough on it. Oh, right. okay. So that's that's one point six five million dollars. <laughs> And that's no trucking. Right. Okay. Well, you in all seriousness, Randy, you wouldn't do every you wouldn't no, do No, but I'm just I'm just 
putting the but magnitude can, out there. Right, right. Well, what we would, the, the other thing we would do is uh, do the main arteries. That's right, that's right, Peter. Not, not uh, you know, the secondary roads, we just, we just can't afford to keep them up to the way we need to keep up the, the main arteries. But we've got, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do all this work on the paved portion of Center Road this year. We did a lot of work on, on Center Road up above the paved portion there just a few years ago. And that's, that's been holding up pretty well. Um, you know, we just, I, I agree with Victor. I mean, we need to, we need to allocate some money to this, but I'm just saying, if we're trying to, if we're trying to whittle this number, I just don't want to, what I don't want to do is go to a meeting and promise the people in town that we're going to spend $300,000 on, on our roads when, you know, <laughs> we don't have the money. You know, we can, can we use some of the ARPA money to do some of that? Yes, we can. But I'm just saying 300,000 is, is literally uh, two thirds of the money we have left. <laughs> well, and it's a drop in the bucket for what we really need. Yeah. Well, we've got to, we've got to allocate most of that money through our, through our regular, uh, through our regular budget process. But this is a, you know, everybody keeps telling me that we're going to have all this money coming down from the feds and I haven't heard boo anything about any of this supposedly there's money flowing into the state of vermont like crazy but where it's going or who's going to get it well i think the league of cities and towns is going to help us once the money is available to tell us where where these grants are this isn't going to be like we have to suddenly you know or, or that we have to just figure this out on our own we have supports to help us with this so oh, no it's not here I, yet it's not yeah, available yet just, just keeping in mind what we're what we're trying to do tonight, which is what I'm trying to focus on, is when we have this public hearing or informational meeting or whatever we're going to have about these ARPA funds, I want to come with you know, I don't mind having it be a couple of hundred a couple of hundred thousand dollars over and, and then let the people pick and choose, but but going in with a 750,000 number when all we have is 400 to me makes no sense that we're not doing our job. So I just trying to stay on task here. Um, if you pull out the $200,000 that Liz has bolded out here for things that it feels like we've committed to the 30,000 for the town hall, the CV fiber, the air packs for the fire department leaves you $315,000. Yep. Yeah. So that three hundred thousand dollars for uh, the mud mitigation, essentially, everything else on the list totals that number. So, yeah. if if we leave, you know, if people look through all of these other items, and if there are things that they feel like are are able to come out of, you know, come off the list because we've got other ways of of uh, paying for it or raising capital for it or whatever. In my mind, that leaves you what you're able to to tie back to the roads, which is, if you'll recall what I said at the last meeting, I I view the roads as sort of the whatever uses up whatever's left, and as we go down and knock stuff off this list, we've got to keep in mind that <laughs> to get something left, we got to knock a lot of stuff off. Right, that's correct, and, and I don't think we need three hundred thousand dollars in there. We couldn't haul three hundred thousand dollars and put it on the road in a year's time. No. When does this money have to be spent by? Twenty twenty four. I believe we have to commit what we're going to do by twenty twenty four, but we have to physically expend it by twenty twenty six. Right. So I don't. You know, again, I don't think that we have to. Like I think it's okay for us to go to the town with a wish list that's more than than what we're getting and at least hear from them like what you know what are their priorities right i think roads are going to be a priority right but maybe we don't even want to put roads down because you know we can make the argument that there's going to be other funding or that 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 really is just a drop in the bucket and doesn't make sense when this is one time funding that is you know fairly um discretionary right and that that could be put towards other things that don't have other funding avenues 
you know, like a, like the heating system and the roof for the fuel tank and the, you know, rescue vehicle and the heating system and the, you know, grant matches and things like that, that we normally don't have money to budget for. So maybe we don't have roads at all in there. Maybe we don't use this money for roads. Unless it's something special that, you know. What I would what I would like to have, and and I don't know how we do it, but just like we did the last time with mud season mitigation, have a proposal like here is where we can get the best bang from our buck to improve the town roads and not just have a blanket statement that we want to spend 300 or 200 or 100, say, here's what it's going to cost to do this project. Here's what it's going to cost to do that project. Those are the ones that we're focusing the ARPA funds on. And I don't know what those projects are. I would rely on, uh, on Eric and Victor to, uh, to come up with them. But maybe we give them as a task the idea that they come up with $150,000 worth of mud season mitigation above and beyond what we do through our normal work plan. Well, whatever happened to our, um, this is, I don't mean to be off topic, but what happened to our, um, you know, five-year plan of like what we were doing on Molly Supple and, and um, the other roads, like doing that huge mitigation? Where is well, that at? We have our, we have our five-year plan. What's been happening the last two years is because of personnel issues and equipment issues, we haven't been able to deal with the problems, the, the issues we have on our on our five year plan. So every year we don't do it. It just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. But, but I guess but, has it been evaluated to determine of those? Is that still our five year plan? Like, is it still in the in the plan that we need to do X road next? I think it was what we, or we something. Do it, as if, if you'll recall, we redo it every year at budget time. All right. And we've just not even been doing it because of COVID and staffing and all that. We've been doing it. We've been putting together the plan, but we haven't. No, I know, but we haven't been doing the work. Stuff. Well, and the money's been eaten up in equipment right. repairs and everything else. And, right. And the major, you know, like the mud mitigation that we had to do this spring and, and whatnot. So. I don't, I don't know as we really, you know, to get to, I don't want to drag this out, but I don't know. I don't, we have a five-year plans, you know, and it's mostly uh, I think they call it full service or whatever, you know, which is, you know, put culverts in and, and the cutting the brush. And I think we should stay with that. As far as doing a major, major, uh, you know, like a Molly Supel again, or even over by Notch Road, I think we ought to put that off for a year or two until we get. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your normal five-year plan. Right. I know. I knew you were. Yeah. Okay. And, and, I, and just... I think we got to put that off for a couple of years and just, uh, and just try to uh, just maintain uh, what we have, um, you know, like we're supposed to go up to uh, South, no, North Bear Swamp and, and do some ditching and just brush there to do that and uh, stuff like that. Just, just, keep, uh, just keep our maintenance up. I mean, I, I know Eric can kick in there too if he wants. Yeah, I, yeah my, my only thing is I, I want to let you know that I've been focusing on the trouble areas on the main arteries right now, trying to exactly. fix the problems that we have so we right. can get back back on track. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. And and one of the one of the places we got also is over on East Hill where it goes out every year. Um, I think some of that's been mitigated last year, but then uh, that's a you know that's uh, East, uh, East Hill main artery. We need to get that. We need to get that slate off there. I know we took some off this year, but there's still a lot of it there. We've had two or three times this summer where that road was like grease lightning, worse than it ever is in any snowstorm, just because of the rain and that slate. No, he's still. Yeah. No, yeah, I just really I, 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 a couple of comments and 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 then a couple of questions. So I just I'm, I'm going to go back and look at the list. Um, and then again, this is just you know personal. Um, I think the 20,000 for the fire department turnout gear to me is a priority. Um, it's, it's something that needs to be done. Um, and in terms of having safety for our, our crew uh, is important. It's, it's not a lot of money uh, either. 
Um, the 50,000 for a 10% match on rehabilitation of the town hall, I would take out. I would support putting $500,000 into, into town hall rehabilitation in any possible scenario um, or even a lesser amount. I just, I don't, I think that's just throwing good money after bad. Um, community fund is, is great, it's fine. Question for Eric about the, uh, the rescue vehicle. It says 25,000 used capital spending plan says 140. So I don't, what are we, are we thinking we could replace this with a used vehicle? I've, I've been just keeping an eye out for stuff. It's very difficult to find decent used equipment because by the time people are getting rid of it, yeah. it's warm. Yeah. Um, but that, that hasn't stopped me from looking. Yeah. So I it's just, and if we can't, if we have to replace it, again, I think if we have to replace it, we can't find used, then we ought to go the route that we do for any other kind of heavy equipment. And we should, you know, either you know, bond for it or put it in the budget take a multi-year loan and, and do what we need to do so that we've got an appropriate um, uh, vehicle. So, I, I, you know, I'm betwixt and between about, you know, do we leave that 25,000 in there or do we look to roll that money, either that money or a bigger amount over a period of time uh, into, uh, into our fire department budget. Uh, the owls, $4,000 chump change. We take it out. Um, I agree. Figured out how to do a hybrid meeting yet, and when we need to, we can have money in our technology budget to to be able to do something like that. Thirty five thousand for the town garage repair. Now, not that long ago, we had had some people look at the town garage, and we had real concern about the viability. You know, kind of like town hall, as far as moving forward. Do we really want to spend that kind of money on the garage, or do we want to look at a better longer term solution than spending $35,000 this way. I, and again, I, I'm just asking. So here's my, here's my take on that. I think right now we need to focus on, we need to focus on the town hall. The town garage is not about to collapse. Is it great? No, it's not great. Would it be nice to be bigger? Yes. Uh, we've had disputes about whether it can be uh, we've had a couple of people tell us that the insulation can't be improved. We've had other people tell us the insulation could be improved. Um, but I think we just need to put that off for a while. We do have to have, we have, I believe, two modines, one or two modines that have, that are either oh. failed or failing. We've got to replace those. We've got to have heat in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And we've got to either either fund it with fund it with our budget or or fund it with this. So I think that's a good use of uh, our funds. The other thing is about these gas modings is if we did build a new town garage, we could move those modings right into the new town garage. So okay, not, that's what I was wondering. Okay, not like they're going to be. Uh, it's not like they're going to be lost. You know, they hang from the right. uh, they hang from the ceiling. So yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. So anyway, that's. But that's I would I would, leave, for now. I would leave the heating. The heating in there, um, I don't know about the fuel tank roof. I mean, is, is that something we really need to do or want to do? I don't know. I mean, that was that was in our plan was to do that, and we put the uh, we put the concrete in there to do it, and we never finished it. So I don't know how everybody feels about that. But again, that isn't a lot of money. It's just finding somebody to do it. Hey, Peter. Yes. I, I know you guys are having a hard time sorting this out, but I'm wondering if what you might want to do is every uh, board member between now and the next meeting looks at Liz's list and puts a priority, re redoes the numbers. I can put together um, a spreadsheet just saying, you know, which, which well, like, I wish I could do a bar graph, but like, which is the most popular project and which around which uh funding level, and then you could have something to work with at your next meeting when you're talking about this. So you, that way people would say, oh, roads are more important among the select board members than we thought. What do you think about that? No? I think that's fine. I, I think, you know, between the fire department, public hearing and the zoning, I feel like we've got our hands full for the next few months in trying to get, in trying to get uh, information about the town hall. There's no hurry to do this. We have plenty of time. So yeah, let's let's do that and see where we and see where we end up. I mean, I'm I guess 
in the long run, I'm not, you know, we, we, we have this public hearing, we have a spreadsheet, we see what people have to say. You know, we've got, we've got plenty of time. I just, I just want to make sure we get the best bang for the buck we can get with this money. That's really what I'm looking for. I know. I'm yeah. just thinking that this way it would be, it would be something that you yeah. could then have a foundation to talk about as a board. My only um, hesitation, I don't really have a hesitation about the roads is that, you know, I just don't know what would be the right number <laughs> to assign the roads, right? I mean, 300,000 isn't enough. 150 is nothing. Uh, you know, what, what, are, what are we even talking about with that money? What are we saying we would do with that money? For well, that's, road? that's why I'm suggesting Liz that we ask, uh, Victor and Eric to come up with a couple of specific projects and costs. I like that idea. Before we decide, I like them to come up with something that they could use 200,000 for or 300,000 for. Right. And the other thing, uh, the other thing I would say about the roads, and we need to, we need to move on from this tonight is what we really need to do as a board and as a community commit to not just a five-year plan, but maybe a 10-year plan. I mean, we tried to, we tried to uh, <laughs> take a look at that with our capital funding plan, but it really doesn't fit into the capital funding plan. But, you know, people want the roads to be better. We know they need to be better. We need to have a plan to do that, but it's going to be a 10-year plan or a 15-year. It isn't going to happen in one or two or three or four or five years. <clears throat> unless we get some huge influx of uh, state or federal money, in which case it's a new ballgame. Mm -hmm. Peter? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think we got to move on with that road. I think uh, Eric and I will have to get together uh, at 7 o'clock at night. I really can't think of, uh, you know, I, I'm not on my best part of my game, but uh, uh and Eric's worked all day, but we can come up with something that uh, we could work with and get you a number. Yep. Yep. And, and uh, so. Okay. Do that. And at the same time, Sarah, if you can organize this as a, uh, or, or, or clean up uh, Liz's spreadsheet and get it out to all of us, that would be helpful. Yeah. Liz's spreadsheet's pretty clean. I'll yeah. just, I'll just send it the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My mess of a spreadsheet. <laughs> it looks pretty good to me. I'll take out this fund balance stuff per uh, Dorinda's suggestion last time because it just confuses things. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. So, so I I agree with this this effort to move forward, but I do have some concerns about kicking the can down the road on things where it, it looks like you know, folks feel like we're fairly committed to whether it's the air packs or this planning grant and whatnot. And part of my concern is with everything else, the longer we kick the road, the can down the road, if we're really going to do these air packs and everybody's committed on that, I would just as soon see a consensus and, and just approve that to move forward so that we're not dealing with, you know, uh, continually increasing prices or, or having the fire department out you know, if we're if we're committed to that, I think that we just need to be say we're committed to that and move on it, and then we can figure everything else out. But um, I'm, I'm fine with that. I was actually going to suggest that, Randy, because I think we were on the verge of doing that at our last uh, at our last meeting, and I also think just for the point of view of showing town support to the fire department when we're going through this transition, that's important too. And then we can talk about the we can talk about the turnout gear later. But I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to move on the on the air packs now before the prices go up another ten thousand dollars. That's a good idea. Yeah. Would you like to make a motion to that effect, Randy? Sure. Um, I would be happy to make a motion to approve up to the seventy thousand dollars in expenditures for the ARPA money to purchase new air packs for the fire department. I'll second that. I'll third it. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve up to $70,000 to uh, update and get new air packs for the fire department uh, per the proposal that we've already reviewed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, there we go. 
there. So, uh, Eric, you're still here? Yes. Okay. You, yes, I'm still here. So we're ready to go on that. So go, go, go. Okay. I will, I will pass it along. Okay. We'll get it in motion. Okay. Thank you very much and have a good night. Okay. Thanks, Eric. See ya. Thanks, Eric. So uh, we're through with the ARPA discussion for tonight, correct? Correct. Uh, we do have we do have one other thing, and I apologize. I meant to add it to the agenda, and I didn't. Uh, it is down under uh, other other business, and that uh, Dick Picard's bid to uh, repaint the rear of the old fire station, which we discussed doing last year. Dick came to me whenever it was three or four weeks ago and said, "Hey, are you guys?" going to do it or not and i said uh dick you need to you need to get a proposal to us uh to do it um peter that's on is, the agenda what that's on the agenda it's, yeah. yeah down under other business right uh, hey liz can you take down your spreadsheet yeah thank you thank you i mean my thing on this and i don't know what the future of that old fire department is but we've painted the roof we painted the other three sides of the fire department the the back is absolutely the worst for fourteen hundred dollars i think we need to go ahead and finish up what we've been doing and then hope we can figure out some long-term resolution for the fire department but it's not going to fall down if we don't paint it but i think that 1400 is a pretty reasonable price there's a lot of prep work there's a lot of peeling paint back there i don't know if any of you have uh taken a look at it yep I mean, the, the dollar amount isn't concerning to me, but I do have reservations on, you know, uh, continuing to spend money on a building that the future's unknown and, and something that most likely isn't absolutely pertinent to. I know, but it's the same old, it's the same old thing, Randy, that we run into. We make a decision to go ahead painted over four or five years and we get three quarters of the way through it and then we say well we're now we're now we're not going to paint the back i mean that for for fourteen hundred dollars that just i i i'm very frustrated about that fire department but we've been we've been spending money every year a few thousand dollars to get the thing painted and we've got one last phase of it to do so well, i understand you i understand your concern but once we once we start whether it's the roads or the fire the old fire department or whatever it is once we commit to one of these things we need to unless something some real disaster occurs we need to follow through and finish it up i think i don't know how others feel sarah's got her hand up well yeah. i think did you guys get the photos that i sent you of the of the front of the of the town hall mm -hmm. yeah that looks really really bad no one sees the back of the fire department. I work here and I've never seen the back of the fire department. I've worked here for nine and a half years. So I don't know why we're spending $1,400 to do that when there is, when you drive up and, and you see the peeling paint, it's embarrassing. So here we go again, you know. <laughs> Can we do hey that? Guys, that I, I, I brought it up because Dick came to me and we talked about it last year. If the sense is, that we don't want to paint the fire department this year, let's not paint it. We can have Dick give us a proposal to paint the town hall, which is another town hall band-aid. Well, uh, I, there are other painters in town, right? Why I don't understand why we're throwing this business solely to Dick Picard when there are when there we should at least be can, thrown out there. Sarah, we can get we can get proposals from other painters for sure. But any other painter is probably busy right now. Yeah. And probably more expensive. Yeah, I, those, Dick, those all, are all good excuses. All but I about Dick is that he's done our our painting on the town hall and the fire department for years. He does he does do a good job, and his prices are reasonable. Now, that isn't to say there aren't other painters, but that that isn't the question of whether we paint the town hall or we paint the fire department. I think I think as a matter of of principle. You go out, you know, I, I've always tell all my all my clientele, go out, try to get three bids, you know, make sure I don't care how long you've been doing business with somebody. I mean, there's if it's personal money, that's a different a different conversation. This is public money. I think we've got to do our due diligence and and at least try to get, you know, uh, a couple various bids for for this kind oh. of work. 
What was the uh, phrase you used? So to don't we have, we have what a, was the phrase you just used a minute ago? Stop, 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 please. Dorinda, help me out. We have a policy about at what level we get bids, correct? Uh, I believe so. I, I'm not sure Sarah would have to answer that one. I believe no, we, there we, is. So what it is, but I think Randy, I think it's for equipment and stuff, but I could be wrong. It's, is it's, it? It's any, I think it's supposed to be expenditures over five thousand dollars. That's, that's so. If we need to review that policy, Randy, we need to review that policy. But I think this would, and I'm I'm just going from memory, but I think this would fall under under that uh, that limit for now. And I don't disagree with what you're saying. I would I would tell you right now. If we want to have, and I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about this tonight, we want to get this painting project, whatever it is done this fall, we're going to have a hell of a time getting any painter to come other than Dick. So if we don't want to hire Dick or we don't want to do the painting, we're making a decision not to do the painting and we're, we're kicking the old can down the road one, one more time, which is exactly what we're, and I'm not criticizing you, Randy. I'm just saying, you know, we, we always seem to get into these things where we, we start projects, we don't finish them, we second guess ourselves, we don't follow through. I'm just. That's uh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. You know, Sarah, I think that's statute, the 5,000 number, not just policy. Uh, but we, yeah, but we, have, we do have a policy. We have a, you have a policy. policy. We have a purchase policy. Yeah. Yeah, purchase policy. I don't know about pit repairs and things like that. That's 15. Dorinda? Yeah, I believe it is 15 for purchases. It's from 2015 and it says, uh, no purchases over $10,000 shall be made by any ten officer or employee without prior, prior approval of the select board. Uh, okay. so all purchases of 25,000 or more or any supported by, fed any supported by federal funds hmm, shall be subjected to the bid process. I wonder if that applies to the ARPA stuff. Yeah. Uh, Probably does. So okay. That's well, what I'm what I'm gathering for tonight is oh. that we are not ready to approve any painting projects at this point in time. Is that a fair statement? Sounds like it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to make the motion that we, in fact, do do hire Dick and get the back of the fire department building done. And let's just see what happens. <laughs> if nobody wants to willing, second, it, it dies. We're gonna find out pretty quick. Yeah. Is anybody willing to second that motion? I'll Dick second it. Motion, so now we need to vote. All those in favor of hiring Dick Picard for $1,400 to paint the back of the fire department, say aye. 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 Nay. Aye. Randy. Nay. 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 The back of the fire department is what we're talking so, about. So you got to so, help me out here. Did, I'm sorry. I. How did you vote, Victor? I didn't. Oh, okay. You abstained. So we have two in favor, two against, and one abstained. So we have not voted to. Oh, no. Okay. Um. Uh, so it did not pass, correct? It did not. Um, approving the minutes of the August 2nd select board meeting action likely is our motion. So moved. Second. Come on, guys. <laughs> I, I can't vote. I wasn't attended. Uh, so I'll second it. Okay, thank you. All those in favor of approving the uh, August 2nd, 22 select board meeting minutes, say aye. 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 And Randy, um, you're abstaining, right? Correct. Okay. And any opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, reviewing and approving a memor memorandum of understanding to give 100000 from the Middlesex American Rescue Plan Act to CV Fiber. I, I did get that thing you sent, Sarah, but I did not have a chance to look at it. I don't know if anybody else did. I did. It's, uh, it's, it's very minimal what Rob did. It's a couple of legal citations, and he asked for what was an, an attachment um, yeah. to be, be included. So I didn't see anything uh, big there. Um, I'm going to say, let's... Uh, 
I, I just, if I'm embarrassed that I didn't have a chance to read it over. I'm sorry. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm willing to go ahead. We've been, we've been trying to, uh, we've been trying to expend this money and get it done. And I guess as, as long as, as long as CB fiber will accept his recommended changes, I say, we go ahead with the MOU and get it, uh, get it done. I don't know yes. how other deal. And I'll make that motion. Is there a so, second? What? So before you second, I just, you know, the attachment that, that we haven't seen are all the, all the terms and conditions for the, uh, for the agreement. You know, does it seem right to vote on that without seeing for the that? agreement or for ARPA? No, the, the grant award terms and conditions and Rob's note said, uh, he has not been able to provide a copy of the attachment and will provide one with comments and concerns following his review. So I, I wrote uh, I wrote CV Fiber and asked them to send the attachment to see which peers have been left off. And I haven't received that. And I, I haven't received a response from them. And it was last minute. It was just yesterday when Rob asked for that. Um, but I asked them to send it directly to Rob, too. And, and it doesn't seem to me as though they've gotten it. You guys might want to hold off. Okay. I don't know if that means I'll we should hold off. We should hold off. Yeah, we should hold off. If he's still waiting for something, we should hold off. Um, as anxious as I am to get that done, I'm not anxious to short circuit the process. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I'm sure it's fine, but you know. Yeah, you're right, Randy. We should see it first. Okay, I'll be after him. Can, can somebody tell me what that sixteen hundred dollars is per household at the bottom of? Uh, Rob, where Rob reported that, because I can't get it. I can't get it when I'm on Zoom. Um, I can't get it on my phone. Do you have it right there, Andy? Uh, I'm, I'm looking down near it. the bottom. There were three things, and one of them was sixteen. I thought sixteen hundred dollars per home per home. So connecting households, uh, the current estimated average cost to connect each home. Is estimated at sixteen fifty, but this is subject to change. Uh, town reserves the right to review specific plans for construction and connections. So, my my understanding of that, uh, Victor, was that that's the cost for CV fiber to make those connections. It's okay. not the cost to the resident, okay. but it's it's the it's the all in cost for those guys. And our buy down, this two hundred thousand dollars with the match, is going to offset. A bunch of that cost right yeah okay all right all right do you think it's good it's good thank you well we're gonna have a we're gonna have another chance to uh take a look at this and i'm certainly i'm certainly gonna look it over and i encourage everybody else to too i mean sometimes these things get so complicated it seems uh it seems a little crazy but anyway onward onward and upward anything onward else and upward. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Dorinda, you'll get us those uh, those bills? Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank Good you. Night. Thank you. Bye-bye.